السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عفى الله عنك لما أذنت لهم حتى يتبين لك الذين صدقوا وتعلم الكاذبين لا يستأذنك الذين يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر أن يجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم والله عليم بالمتقين إنما يستأذنك الذين لا يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر وارتابت قلوبهم وارتابت قلوبهم فهم في ريبهم يترددون ولو أرادوا الخروج لأعدوا له عدة ولكن كره الله بعاثهم ولكن كره الله بعاثهم فثبطهم وقيل اقعدوا مع القاعدين لو خرجوا فيكم ما زادوكم إلا خبالا ولا أوضعوا خلالكم يبغونكم الفتنة وفيكم سماعون لهم والله عليم بالظالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إله العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا رب يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين We thank Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal for having gathered us here today and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to surround us with the malaika and to cause his mercy and his sakinah to descend upon us and to raise us with the anbiya alayhimu salatu wa salam and those whom he has mentioned with them ameen Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the fact that we are here in the masjid worshipping Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, performing our salah in the manner that Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal wants us to perform it, means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants a lot of goodness for us. When Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal loves a servant, He uses him. And what does it mean that Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal uses you? He places you in positions that are pleasing to Him, Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, so as to grant you Jannah, so as to grant you much more. So when you find yourself in Salah, and you find yourself giving charity and you find yourself performing acts of worship that you don't even need to perform, then know that Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal wants goodness for you. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves to see goodness for you. So that is a glad tiding for the believer. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is preparing for the battle of Uhud. Badr has already passed and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is preparing for the battle of Uhud and he takes with him 1,000 men and they march forth to Uhud. Now Uhud is actually a mountain range that is just on the outskirts of Medina. In fact, today it is within the city of Medina. But at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was on the outskirts of Medina, you could say it was out of Medina in totality. So he is marching forth to Uhud. And behind Uhud is an army that is waiting for him from Mecca, prepared by Quraysh. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he marches forth, about halfway through the journey, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, who was the leader of the Munafiqeen, 
And notice his name is Abdullah. His name is the worship of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So your name doesn't mean that you will be from amongst those who are good, from amongst those who are saved. Your family doesn't mean you will be from amongst those who are good and saved. His name is worshipper of Allah, but he's the head of the munafiqeen. He's the head of the hypocrites. So, The one whose actions are slow and he doesn't do much in this world, his nasab and his lineage will not take him far with Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. In fact, it will not benefit him in any way whatsoever. And that is why we find some of the Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam. Their children, their very own children, are in the hellfire. The son of Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam, he is from amongst those who are doomed forever. And we know this by the declaration of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So it is for us to do whatever we can to build our lives before we die and go to Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So Abdullah, the leader of the Munafiqeen, he stands up and he says that, you know what? We need to leave this army because there will be no good that will come from it. They are going out there to get themselves killed. So let us leave these people. And then he makes excuses to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and leaves. One third of the army left with Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Sulul. Imagine what this does to the rank of the believers at the time. It is demoralizing. People are leaving the army. We are marching forth towards the enemy. We were 1,000 strong and now all of a sudden we are only 700. So it is demoralizing. But Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal had a plan. That if they came out with you, then they would have only increased you in weakness and they would have placed khabal. Khabal is weakness and they would have placed fitna amongst you. Imagine those people and that caliber of people, munafiqeen, who were not actually believers in Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, were amongst the rank of the believers when they went and faced the enemy. They would have caused more havoc there on the battlefield. And they would have been the reason for the complete and utter destruction of the Muslimin. So Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal got rid of them. And he removed them. You don't deserve to be with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They thought they were abandoning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they were being abandoned by who? By none other than, none other than Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans. And this raises a question. Sometimes we need to sit and think to ourselves that if we don't find ourselves in the masjid, and we don't find ourselves worshipping Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And we find ourselves running away from His worship and that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we treat others badly and we don't care about Yawmul Akhir. Then perhaps Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal doesn't care for us. And it is not us that are running away from Salah, but Allah has sent us away. Why? Because He doesn't want us anymore. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives everybody equal opportunity. Everyone has equal opportunity. When you come into this world, you can achieve, you can do. Every single person has as much as opportunity as the next human being. But when you constantly show Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal that you don't care for Him, and you don't care about His command, and you go towards His prohibitions, there comes a time where Allah says, we don't need you anymore. You know, sometimes we are helping someone in our family or someone even further. And this happened with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He was helping someone and then he stopped due, a, due to a certain matter. Allah says, carry on. So sometimes we are helping someone and then they do something to us and it affects us and it hurts us and things happen in family. So it is normal for this to happen. 
You are helping that person. Perhaps they are not only beneficiaries of your zakah, but you are paying so much of the expenses. You are helping them. And one day that person turns against you. And one day that person says something bad to you. What do you do? Will you continue with that sadaqah? Did you do it for Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal in the first place? If you did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you continue. And if you did it because you wanted recognition, and you wanted their goodness, and you wanted their gratitude, and you wanted to have power and authority over them, then you stop and you say, no, no, it is too much, I don't want. So that is a test from Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. Similarly, these people actually, well, not similarly, but in a very different way, these people are being abandoned by Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal. He is cleansing the rank of the Muslimin from these people. You don't come, we don't need you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually describes this and he says, لَوْ أَرَادُ الْخُرُوجَ لَا عَدُّوا لَهُ عُدَّةً وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ بِعَاثَهُ وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ بِعَاثَهُ فَثَبَّطَهُ وَقِيلَ قُعُدُوا مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ So if they really wanted to come with you, and if they really wanted to go out with you, they would have prepared for it in the proper manner, getting ready their shields and their horses and their armor and everything else, getting themselves mentally prepared for battle, they would be ready. But they never wanted to come out in the first place. So Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal says, Kari Allah despises their coming out with you. فثبطهم. So he kept them there. So sit with those who are sitting back in Medina. We don't need you. We will be victorious. And Islam will thrive. And Islam will succeed with or without you. We don't need you. And that is very scary for a believer. We ask Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal that he makes us from amongst those who are used for his cause. And from amongst those who are there for Islam and who stand with the Muslimin and those who die with shahada on their lips. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Because that is success. That is the ultimate success. Here they march forward and they think they have abandoned Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but they have been abandoned by Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And the rest of the believers move forward and they go to Badr and they go to Uhud. And here, as soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets there, he places 70 to 80 of the archers on a hillock. And this hillock was known as Jabal al-Rumah. It was a small hill that was next to Uhud or right besides Uhud. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam placed them here so that they could protect the flank of the Muslimin. So that if... The disbelievers saw that we can no longer be successful from attacking them directly and in front. They would come from the behind or the side. So these people would be there with their arrows to hammer them, to hit them, to take them down. So he placed them there and said, no matter what happens, don't come down from this hillock. No matter what happens, don't come down from this hillock, even if you see the birds eating from our corpses. Even if you see the birds eating from our corpses, don't come down. Why? Because your position is very important. If you leave, we will be affected. So the battle starts and it is going on and it gets hot and the believers are beginning to succeed in that battle. And the some of these people who were on that hillock, they noticed that it is as though we have won and there is booty that is there. Let us go and enjoy of that booty as well. So as they thought that victory is there, some of them actually abandoned the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these were sincere sahaba radiallahu anhum. They also disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at times. So they abandoned the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they went down the hillock. And this teaches us many things. 
A good believer slips up at times. A good believer makes mistakes. So these Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they went down. Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal says, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ from amongst you are those who want the dunya and from amongst you are those who want the akhirah. So Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal is clearly telling them, those from amongst you who wanted the dunya, you went down. Those from amongst you, Abdullah ibn Jubayr and some of the companions, they remained on the hillock, they wanted akhirah. You were preferring the dunya, so you went down. And immediately, Khalid ibn al-Walid, he takes the lead and he comes and he attacks from behind and the Muslimin are affected in a great way. You see what happens when we disobey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Immediately the collective is affected. And this is something that is so important. Yes, this was one portion of the army and just part of them. It was not the entire army that disobeyed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But whom was the defeat for? Whom was the effect upon, the effect upon? The entire army was affected. Why? Because a few of them disobeyed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And here we see today, in a similar fashion, the Muslimin are weak. And we start and we think that, you know what? It doesn't matter. My one sin doesn't affect what is happening in Gaza. My one sin doesn't happen to affect what is happening in Afghanistan and what is happening in Kashmir and what is happening in different parts of the globe. It doesn't affect anything. But your sin is not only one because you are thinking like that and so many others are thinking like that as well. So as a result, as a whole, we are affected. Even if they are not sinners, even if they are not constantly disobeying Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Al Mu'minu lil Mu'mini kal Bunyani yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. The Mu'min for the other Mu'min is like a wall, like a building. Parts of it strengthen the others. You know, if you have a wall that is built and there is brick over brick and there is cement in between, each believer is one brick there. You take out one brick, that wall is automatically slightly weaker. You take out two and you take out five and you take out ten, all of a sudden there is a hole. And it becomes even weaker. It is more likely for the whole wall to fall down. We similarly are the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are a brick in that wall. So the next time you consider doing something that will only affect you, it's only affecting my life, it doesn't matter if I do it, it's okay, you know what? If I just smoke this little bit of weed, it doesn't matter. If I drink this little bit of alcohol, it doesn't matter. I'll make tawbah later. You are actually affecting the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because you are part of that ummah. So you are weakening that wall by leaving the command of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal and the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here they are affected such that the Muslimin suffered after that. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, when the Muslimin saw that the Muslims are being affected here and many of us are losing our lives, some of them actually turned back and began to run away. Some of them turned back and began to run away. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is left all alone in front with the enemy. He was affected. He, one, his tooth was affected and he broke his tooth. His tooth was broken. And and his head was sliced. So he received this cut and his blood is bleeding. This was the blessed blood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal describes the scene for us. إِذْ تُصْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْهُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخْرَاكُمْ فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّا بِغَمٍ لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَىٰ مَا فَاتَكُمْ لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَىٰ مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا مَا أَصَابَكُمْ 
when you were leaving and and you were not looking at anyone around you you were not cared about what was happening around you you were just simply interested in leaving and the messenger is calling out to you the messenger is beckoning you come come we need to fight these people we need to get rid of them come let's go this is the time and you left him you abandoned him you forgot about him and the messenger is calling you allahu akbar think of the scene think of it for a moment the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there the enemy in front and the sahaba radiyallahu anhum behind and he is calling them come back come back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and then he increased you in pain and torment. And it happened in manifold, in a great way you were affected. Why? You see, one was the pain and the effect that happened from the people who abandoned the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa by leaving their post and coming down into the battlefield to get the booty. But the second was that now there was a rumor that was spreading that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed on. So this affected them in a great way. And they were really demoralized at this point. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's calling out to them. Nobody is responding. And then some people gathered together and they fought back and the disbelievers left. So Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, he actually dispelled that rumor. And it is a few that came together and won that battle and moved forward. You see, after the defeat, they managed to push away the disbelievers. That is why we see it as a victory because Islam continued. If that was defeat, Islam continued beyond that. Then how can we call it defeat? So it was a lesson. Yes, it was abandonment. Yes, it was difficult for them. Yes, they did lose lives, but it was actually a victory for Islam in total. You see, the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away as well during this battle. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very hurt by this. So he actually make, made a dua against Quraysh. Oh Allah, destroy them. Oh Allah, finish them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him something very interesting. You would think that this is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling out. And this is the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam begging of Allah rabbul izzati wal jalal. The response will come immediately. And the response will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirming that he will kill them, he will destroy them. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam receives the response. لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ It is not for you to decide the matter. This is who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being told. It is not for you to decide whether I will punish, men, uh, punish them or I will forgive them. فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Yes, they are oppressors. But it is my decision. It is my choice, O Messenger. And this determines for every believer in Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, his position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The slave and messenger of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So that is a position of slavery with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, you are the decider. I am the one who will accept. I am the servant, I will accept. Hands up, surrender to you, oh Allah. And that is what you do every time you say Allahu Akbar. What you are saying is, oh Allah, I surrender my life to you. I acknowledge I am slave and you are Lord. I am slave and you are master. You are in control and I am the controlled. So I leave it to you, oh Allah. And this is what we need to understand when it comes to the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Islam. We see it on our screens and we begin to question. Why did Allah Rabbul Izzati wa Jalal let this happen? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow for innocent young children to be killed? Allahu Akbar. Yes, it hurts the heart. Yes, our eyes tear. Yes, we become sad. And that is all human. 
But that is not for us to question Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal and for us to say, why did you do this? Oh Allah, because He is the Lord, He is the Master, He is the Creator, and He plans and He decrees. And for us is to accept, La yus'alu amma yaf'al. He will not be asked about what he does. Wahum yus'alun, and they will be questioned. Allah has hikmah and wisdom even in that strife and in that difficulty. He knows best. And that is the attitude of a believer. You see, for us to understand this, the malaika, the malaika questioned Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal when he was creating insan. Are you placing on earth those who will spill blood and cause corruption? So Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal says, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know that which you don't know. You think you know? No, you don't know. Angels, don't think you know so much. I know that which you don't know. You see, our minds are too small to fathom. There is a certain capacity that the mind has and you don't understand. But do you have free will? Yes, you do. Is it Allah that chose to pull that trigger? No, it was a human being. Is it Allah who chose to bomb those children? No, it was a human being. Is it Allah who chose to massacre a people? No, it was a human being. So why do you, O oh insan, as humanity, blame Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal for that which you are doing? Why don't you take responsibility for it and stop it? Beautiful, isn't it? So we really need to understand our position with Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And we really need to understand who He is to us in our lives. We ask Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal to grant us the ability to be true slaves of Him because that is the ultimate honor that a believer can have.